Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Tonight we're going comet hunting. I am out here in the Texas Hill Country. I'm about an hour northwest of Austin at this kind of darkish camping spot uh, next to Buchanan Dam, I think it's what it's called. But uh, we're definitely out here in the, in the Texas Country, that's for sure. I'm in this little <laughs> tiny bunk bed campground I got, which is actually pretty cheap. It was only like $60, which is a pretty premium bang for your buck astrophotography experience, which I'm quite happy with. So anyways, let me tell you all about this crazy astronomical event that's coming up, which is the Green Comet C2022E3 ZTF. Now, this comet is a little special because it's supposed to be visible to the naked eye tonight or going forward uh, from a dark sky site. You wouldn't want to try and look at this with your eyeball from the inside of the city. So if you out there live in a city, please drive out of the city to go look at it. To be completely honest with you, the news is kind of hyping this comet up way more than they need to be. So don't get your hopes up for anything crazy yet because I doubt this will hold a candle near to Neo wise and no it's not the first comet we'll see in 20,000 years this is random news stuff getting everything wrong and trying to overhype stuff so will this comet be better than Neo wise probably not but it could still be pretty cool you could at least see it with your naked eye so there's that right now the comet looks like it is in Buodes and Draco so currently it'll be kind of in the northeast part of the sky if you live in the northern hemisphere, kind of early morning it will be visible. Yes, it will pass through Polaris, Camelopardalis, and then as you get into mid-early February, it'll pass through Mars and the Hyades. So it's kind of taking a nice cut through the sky. It's going from, you know, Buodes and Draco over through the North Star, and then over to Mars and the Hyades constellation. So it's kind of taking a nice path. It'll be pretty close to Mars, but again, the moon is going to make things pretty difficult here with shooting it. So I'm hoping it'll look pretty cool. It's been getting a lot brighter in the last couple of days. So there's, there's always a chance for something interesting, but yeah, the news is way overhyping this comet compared to anything else. I'm going to be getting up pretty early around 3 AM to try and go for this comet. So yeah, it's going to be an early morning. This is kind of how it goes when you shoot comets. Uh, earlier in the comet's life, you're going to be really sending it early in the morning and then towards the later end of the comet's life. It'll be a bit better positioned for nighttime imaging, but it should be good. So this comet has two, well, three main components. There's the coma, there's the dust tail, and then there's the ion tail. So the ion tail takes on this beautiful blue hue and it just extends for a huge distance. The dust tail is more of like a matte white gray colored tail. This one is taking on quite a bit of structure in this comet. It seems to be, you know, it makes a big swoosh to the side. So it's very pretty. And then there's also the coma of the comet, which is kind of the comet's atmosphere of carbon monoxide, which makes this nice glowing green color, which is why we call this a green comet because it's glowing green. But really the coolest part of the comet is the ion tail, that nice long blue thing that astrophotographers, including me, love so very much. That's what's gonna look really cool in our photos. So fingers crossed we have a really nice, good looking ion tail tonight because that would make the whole trip to get a nice ion tail shot. So I'm gonna go to sleep and come back around 3 a.m. and fingers crossed we'll get this thing. Almost go time and I figured I'd give you a quick walkthrough of my setup before we actually get started imaging tonight. I was an idiot and I got here late so I set up after dark and now I have to sit here with a flashlight and film my equipment talk through. So anyways, Let's work from the ground up. I got a Jackery battery. That's giving me my power for tonight. I've got an Ioptron tripe here that holds my Ioptron CEM70 mount with iPolar, of course. Then we've got my old Orion ED80 TCF. It had the best focal length for what I wanted, which is like 480 millimeters. It's kind of slow, but it's what we got. Next, I got the field flattener. I got a Canon 6D. Then we've got a moonlight focuser, which I'm not even using. On top of this, on top of the Prima Luce clamps, we've got a Rockinon 135 F2 with Astro Mechanics, I think, 3D printed rings, a ZWO 6200MC with the ZWO EAF autofocuser. And on top of that, I have a William Optics guide cam and a QHY5 L2 
sorry, guide scope and a QHY5 guide cam. And this probably has a ton of differential flexure, but I was in a rush and half of the parts of the setup are going to Namibia, so they're already packed. So I had to unpack all my stuff to hobble something together for the comet tonight. And this is what we came up with. So I'm thinking this should work pretty well. Uh, I wanna get as much ion tail as I can with the wide field, but I also want that nice uh, dust tail detail. So that's why we've got the long focal length system to boot. And those together will get me all the details I want. And I plan on compositing all these images together in the end. There's a bunch of teenagers having a party out here tonight. They sound like they're having a great time, but yeah, and the guide camera on top is just to keep it all tracking. But yeah, that's the whole rig. Hello. Oh, I got so many cables on the ground. This is a nightmare. What's up, guys? I was up until like four this morning just shooting, but I think that last night went super, super well. I took a lot of minute long exposures. I actually used minute long exposures for both this camera and the telescope system. And I think it was, a, it was the right move. The balancing act you always strike with shooting a comet is do you track the comet or do you track the stars? I tend to track the stars and then I expose for as long as I can without the comet blurring too much. So that's my usual strategy. I think it's the most common strategy as well. But now that that's all done, we have to calibrate everything so this system already has its flats darks whatever but i don't have any flats or biases for this thing so we're just going to point it up at the blue daytime sky which is perfectly clear and grab a couple flats and then i'm going to get packed up and head home i'm tired so usually what i do for this is i just put my camera in movie mode or live view and then I look at the histogram display, adjust my exposure time accordingly until I get a good histogram bump, and then I just take a bunch of photos. That should make 25 flats. Now I'm going to throw the camera cap on and shoot my biases, but calibration is pretty easy guys, you got to do it. Come on. Alright guys, welcome back. We have made it home. We've got all the data loaded up and now we're getting into the extra nerdy part of the video where I'm going to show you how to take all the raw data and produce a final image with it using PixInsight and a little bit of Photoshop. Let's get into it. So if you did your due diligence, we assume you have lights, flats, biases. You may or may not have darks, but if you have all those things, that's really awesome. This step is for you. We're going to go script batch pre-processing, weighted batch pre-processing and you are going to dump all your frames in here. Uh, just go through and calibrate everything like normal, you know? You load your lights, you load your flats, you load your bias, and then you're just going to make sure you don't check apply image integration. You can pick a reference frame or let it go with auto and just give it an output directory and let it go through and calibrate your images and then align your images on the stars. Those are the two prerequisites you need to go through to the rest of processing. So if you're more of a basic photographer and you didn't do your due diligence, then you might not have calibration frames. You're gonna to need to align all of your frames by the stars anyways. So you would do that by coming to star alignment, pick a reference frame, pick all the frames you wanna align, pick an output directory, and just make sure you have all of your images aligned by the stars because the next portion of this relies on you having that. So the next part is we're going to break into the Comet Align module in PixInsight, which is a module that brings a lot of people great pain, but we're going to work through it together. So here's Comet Alignment. The first thing we're gonna need is of course our frames which are aligned by their stars. So I'm gonna grab my star aligned and calibrated frames here. We're going to, I suppose it doesn't matter because I already did this, I'm just demonstrating it. We're just gonna grab a couple of the frames and load them in and it's gonna go through and extract the fits keywords and whatever it else it's gonna decide to do. Okay, we have all of our frames loaded up now, you can see there's a whole bunch inside the comment align window. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to specify an output directory. You can do, you know, any folder. You just need to make sure that your names are good and consistent. So here in the comment align folder, that's good. 
So we'll have a postfix as well to help identify what kind of frame this is, and this will be comet aligned or underscore CA as a postfix. That's just to help you remember because this is going to get complicated quickly. Now the next part is we're going to go to the parameters and this is pretty dead simple. So what you're going to do is you're going to hit show on this top part. We're going to stretch the image so we can see it and there's our comet. We click on the comet. We click show on the second image in the data set. We'll stretch it so we can see the image and then we will click on the next comet. So what that does is completely aligns the comet in all of the photos. And this is reliant upon two facts. One, it assumes that your stars are aligned. And two, it runs off the timestamp for your images. So as long as the stars are aligned, the motion of the comet is constant and linear for your capture duration. So you can just apply a simple offset based on the timestamp of the image to perfectly align the comet in all of them and that's how it works. So then you hit the circle and it's just gonna go through and spit out all of your comet aligned images. Now the stars will be moving in the background and the comet will be stationary, which is what we want. So I've already done this process because it takes a second. Let's pull in a comet aligned photo here so I can show it to you. All right, so here is a comet aligned subframe. You can see it's been shifted pretty greatly at the edge. And that is awesome. Now the next step, if you were to do this the traditional method, is you would integrate all of your frames together, the comet aligned frames, and you would give it a very strict Windsorize sigma clipping, sigma high parameter. You would crank this up. And the thought process behind that is since the stars are now moving in the background, once you go to integrate everything, the stars will be stacked out. In reality, this is very difficult to do properly. Uh, a lot of the time you'll be left with a bunch of streaks in your photo and it's just going to look really disgusting. So there is a new way now that I think Adam Block has been doing and I've been doing since NeoWise as well is you use StarNet or Star Exterminator before you go ahead and integrate your comet image. So just to describe what that looks like. Okay, so we'll have our comet aligned images like so. And then we will pick our star removal tool of choice, whatever flavor we want to go with. Uh, you could use Starnet or Star Exterminator, whichever you think looks better for your image. We'll actually compare for the two which one looks better. So typically what I find is that for long focal length things, Star Exterminator does a better job, but for super wide field things, Starnet kind of does a better job. So you'll just have to mix and match and kind of get an idea just by experimentation of what's gonna look best for your photos. But we're going to star remove the stars on all of our comment aligned photos. So I'll come back when this is done running so we can compare. All right, so just comparing the two results, on the right I have the star exterminator image and on the left I have the star net image. I've already star deleted all of them with star net, but just an interesting comparison. There's pretty much no difference for this 80 millimeter refractor photo. So that is good to know. So when you go to actually do this, here's how it's gonna work. You're going to go to your Pixinsight workspace window. You're gonna right click. You're gonna say image container. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna hit this plus folder button. And here you are going to grab all of your comet aligned photos with stars in them. Now, you're going to give it an output directory, and you're going to name this Starless Comet Aligned Images. Very good. Now we're going to take the triangle, the instance of the image container, we're going to drag it on over to the workspace, and then you will take your star removal program of choice, either Starnet or Star Exterminator, and you're going to apply an instance of it to this image container by just dropping it on. And what that's going to do is make it so it goes through all of your photos and deletes all of the stars in them. Now this is going to take a lot of time depending on how many photos you have, but I find it gives me a cleaner result in the end, so for me it's worth the wait. I am back after a quick star removal on like 100 images, and now we are actually going to integrate all of these images for which we have deleted the stars. So I'm just going to look at the first and last image of the set and make sure that they look good. That's fine. And then we'll take a peek at the last one and see if it even makes sense to integrate them. We can see that the comet is aligned. That is good. All right, now it's time to integrate. We're gonna grab all of our comet aligned star deleted images. We're gonna add them into the image integration tool. 
I'm going to set my reference as the last one in the stack because it probably has the best SNR. And then I'm just going to adjust my clipping parameters like so. I'm going to be pretty strict with it because there still will be some residuals that need to get integrated out. And then we're going to smash the circle. And this is going to go through and delete Sorry, it's not going to delete all the stars. It's going to integrate all of our photos and then we'll get a comet image with no stars. It'll just be comet with its tails and hopefully high detail. So we'll be back when that's done. Okay, so the integration process is finished and now we have this image of the comet here. We're going to go ahead and save this as comet and we'll save it as XISF here. Okay, so the next part of editing is a bit interesting. We're going to open the Comet Align again, but we're going to grab now our Comet Aligned subframes. So we will grab 245 to 341. So here we have our Comet Aligned photos. We're going to output into a folder called Comet Subtracted. We're going to set our operand image as the Comet and now it's going to subtract the comet out of all of our frames. Once you're done pulling out the comet from all of the images, you're gonna be left with a bunch of images with just the stars in them. And I'll show you an example of one of these. So here we can see the comet is greatly diminished and its tail is pretty much all gone. This is exactly what we want. Now that you have those, what you're gonna do is actually star align all of them. So you're gonna get the star alignment tool and you're going to load one of these as a reference and realign the stars in all of the photo. Once you've got all the stars aligned, you're going to integrate all of those photos together and then you will end up having an image which is just your stars and you also have an image which is just the comet. From this, you will continue editing an astrophoto as normal and then I'll show you how I blend them together in Photoshop. So there's the comet and I just switch this blend mode to lighten and I can drop the comet directly into the photo. Now from the rest of this, it's just kind of aesthetic changes. You can do what you please for the rest of your own photo, but I'm going to go ahead and time lapse through the rest of the editing of this one, and I'll see y'all with the final image.